Welcome to this presentation where I'm going to introduce a taxonomy of video genres of use in education. This is a framework that we hope will assist teachers in making learning videos. My name is Magnus Nord and together with Halfdan Hauptbakken I have made this taxonomy. And in this presentation I'm going to introduce it to you. If you look uh, on the downside of the presentation, you have links and a QR code to be able to download my presentation. First of all, what are the background for this presentation? It was the, the, the thought of after the pandemic that uh, when we discuss what is quality in uh, uh, classroom education, there's a lot of meanings. But uh, when we come to discussion quality of online education, that discussion isn't come that far, we think. So for uh, the great vision of the taxonomy is to create uh, awareness of what is a good learning video might be and help teachers uh, making videos for themselves. We have two goals with the taxonomy. Can we agree upon uh, how we should divide different kinds of videos into different genres? And can the taxonomy help us with that? Uh, we often, um, uh, when we discuss uh, educational videos or learning videos with colleagues, we often don't understand each other because we have pictures in our head on what an educational video is for us. But the other person maybe thinks uh, another thing. Uh, let's save an example. If I think that educational videos is how to do videos, because that's what I usually make, and my colleague that I'm discussing the term with is thinking video interviews because that's what she usually makes, then we have a discommunication of this discussion quality uh, up on what is a good learning video. So what we hope to achieve uh, is a, a common goal that um, uh, in order to make qualified choices, you need to know the possibilities. Uh, and we hope that the taxonomy will provide and show di different genres that is possible to make of educational videos. Uh, our hypothesis is that if you only know about these and these genres, you only make these and these genres. If you're aware of the whole range of genres that you can make, then you maybe choose another educational video next time you're gonna make one. For us, it all started when we made the course MOOC about MOOC, making theory and praxis come together. So we had this uh, course that we was provided uh, ec economic funds from the government to make during the pandemic. And we have to ask ourselves um, what kind of uh, education should we make teaching others about online education. I myself have a uh, great experience by making uh, 10 different MOOCs, uh, all back to nine, uh, 2013. Um, and me and my colleagues, we have to ask ourselves, uh, what are we actually, how do we actually create an online course? What is our own practice and how should we address this to others? We concluded that we have four elements, uh, four pillars of our online course uh, curriculum. Uh, it's uh, text, it's tasks and it's quizzes. And of course it's videos. And I have the privilege uh, to make the module about online education. Uh, but I have to ask myself, what is the best way of teaching this to others? And my answer was, I have to make a uh, taxonomy uh, that we can agree upon so we could good, get good examples into different pedagogical video approaches in education. 
And this is the basis for this presentation and this article. First to some related research on video-based learning. Uh, we uh, founded our theories uh, with using Richard Meyer's 12 principle of multimedia communication. That's in the bottom. And we also looked a lot of uh, Jack Kumis and uh, his further research uh, on uh, pedagogical roles in videos. Both Richard Myers and Jack Kumi, they emphasize on small, small parts of a video that can uh, make better pedagogical results of using the video. When they only use very, very small parts of the video and analyze these small parts. Uh, the best article we came upon was uh, this article from uh, 2018, uh, Taxonomy of Asynchron Instructional Video Styles. In this taxonomy, uh, that is quite good. Uh, that's have divided into these categories. Uh, we had a problem uh, putting in all the videos from our courses into this taxonomy. Actually, 25% uh, of our videos, we didn't feel quite belonged in any category or genre made in this taxonomy. And we feel the approach uh, is more of a technical side. How do you pr produce the video? And the taxonomy is based on uh, human interaction uh, in the videos. What kind of artifacts are being used to uh, communicate with the audience in these videos? So um, we started developing our own genres. First, an article I published with a colleague, Irina Egernes, back in 2019. We looked at one of our MOOC courses. Uh, we counted the videos. We had 323 videos. And we concluded that uh, in that course, we could divide the courses into how to do tutorial videos. That was 75%. And pedagogical videos, that was 25%. For this project, I started up doing the same. So I, that at this time, I looked into three of our own made MOOC courses. ICT MOOC, ICT PED MOOC and Online Educational MOOC. So in these three MOOCs together, we counted 1,271 videos. And when we divided it into the same as how to do tutorial demonstrations and pedagogical videos, we found that 45% uh, was uh, how to do and 55% was educational videos. But we needed to go more into detail, we felt. So um, in a great discussion with colleagues over, over one year, we landed on these categories. So we divided into 10 different genres instead of two. And as you can see in uh, this slide, uh, we, uh, this is how the different videos was divided into the different genres in our counting. And, and if we look up on uh, more this one, you can see how uh, different the videos are divided into genres in percent. And we can still see that how to do videos is, is uh, almost the same represented as earlier. But as you see on pedagogical videos, we have divided them more into different genres to perhaps get a better understanding of which kind of different pedagogical videos you can make in your own education. We have uh, presented this taxonomy in uh, this article for this conference and you see the link to the presentation in the down right corner. What is the criteria of putting one video in one video genre and not the other? 
The criteria of selecting a video to a relevant video genre was based on the property of the educational practice or activity performed in the learning video. Learning videos have many shapes, shared properties. The, there has been an ongoing discussion in the research team re regarding what a video genre of a learning video might belong to. For example, can a learning video belong into several video genres? And the answer is probably yes. But there is no clear and correct answer when applying a criteria to a practice. So uh, this is, has been and going to be an ongoing discussion in, in which kind of genre do a video uh, belong or could you check different genres on an educational video. So in the end, let's have a look at the taxonomy and the different genres we have decided to divide our educational videos into. The first genre is how to do tutorial demonstration. This is uh, learning videos when you show how, for example, to change the tire on a car uh, or showing something how to use a kind of software, for example. The second genre in is instructional teaching videos. This is probably the most used genre in the world because this is also uh, when you record lectures. Uh, this is when a person's sitting in front of a camera and uh, trying to teach the audience by video. The third uh, genre is introductional videos. It is when you introduce a course or you introduce a, a team or a module uh, and tell the students what they are going to do in this um, uh, learning object. The fourth genre is interviews. Uh, it's when, an, uh, when you interview an expert to get an uh, opinion of uh, a, 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 a thesis or a team or uh, um, as an educational um, whatever. Uh, the fifth genre is videos on location. In this genre, what's happened in the background is important. Is important for the main communication or is a secondary uh, communication that provides you with uh, live uh, things from the reality uh, around you. Not as in this video when I am in a studio using a green screen. So in video on location, uh, what's happening in the background uh, in the video is important for the communication. The sixth genre is video cases. Uh, this is um, in an educational aspect. You uh, want to introduce something from their probably future practice. So for example, for a nurse or for a teacher or for an industry worker, showing, showing them a, a practical approach to their forthcoming uh, job. So this could be in uh, actual takes, uh, video takes from the future. Um, but because of uh, the GDPR in, in uh, uh, personal rights, they, that is not always that easy. So it could be uh, role play or it could be animation movies showing uh, the, the case. So we have a big genre uh, and especially after the pandemic, it, it's a uh, uh, conference meeting uh, like this one or just a video meeting and live uh, recording live or recordings of these meetings uh, is put into this rather used genre um, and the eighth genre is animation and virtual reality in our courses we saw a lot of animations by made by external people uh, these uh, take a lot of time to make, but they have a very good communication, as Richard Myers put it. 
So animation is really good and a new and forthcoming technology is virtual reality uh, that uh, provide many new uses in education and we have especially uh, looked at uh, avatar videos when you get a uh, new person uh, that uh, step in for me as a teacher and uh, tell the, the tell the story. The ninth genre uh, have we called self-reflecting videos uh, and that are uh, students or teachers reflecting on what's happening uh, in, in, in the learning process. And we think that's a very uh, exciting new thing to, to use and we use it a lot in our MOOC courses. It could be a, a student reflecting on uh, the last week's uh, module. Uh, it could be the, the, the teacher that reflects on what's happening, uh, uh, his uh, know-how of a, a, a team, uh, or it could be um, used as an exam, for example, reflecting instead of an oral exam. So uh, the tenth genre we're going to present uh, it's uh, it's professional video recordings, uh, and we define professional video recordings as video recordings that an up uh, um, and, and a regular teacher can't make on his own. Uh, it's videos where uh, you have to have professional to help you. It's like uh, uh, a TED talk or a big conference or a music videos or something like that. You have to have professional help uh, and we uh, signal uh, in this genre uh, that maybe could be replaced into all the other genres we've been through. But uh, as the genre, this taxonomy is first and foremost helping teacher uh, making their own educational videos, we wanted to signal that there is a genre where you need help from professionals. I hope this has been an interesting presentation of this video taxonomy.